Hi everybody, Josiah here, also known as Chilling Silence, and I want to talk to you today about Digibyte, but before we do, a more of a generic security bit of advice. If you happen to be running an older version of iOS, like I was on my handy dandy iPod here that I use for testing the iOS app on, make sure you're up to date, because if you are running an older version, it is vulnerable to certain issues. Um, now, obviously, the chances of these affecting you directly are slim, but why take the risk? Hit the update button, make sure you're all on 14.4, and should be good to go. Now, thank you to Yoshi as well for the heads up there. He is one of the lead developers, or I suppose the lead developer behind the iOS app. He's the one who's implemented Digi Assets into the Digibyte app as well. Uh, give him a follow on Twitter if you are not already. It's at Yoshi Jaeger there, and I'll include that down below. Speaking of giving someone a follow, I would recommend that you give Barry a follow because he's the gentleman behind the RandomX and ProgPow implementation for us. He's also been working on bringing Digibyte from Bitcoin Core 0.17 to 0.21, so a couple of years worth of upgrades there, which is really fantastic to see. So what he's done here is he's gone and shared a, a video. Now the top part here, this is the stratum logs. So this is basically your intermediary that interfaces between XMRIG and the Digibyte core software. Now the reason that he's showing that is to show it basically confirming all of the hashes and things as well, looking over the work, checking it, and you can see down the bottom here this is XMRIG on his actual computer there, uh, sending all of the the work back basically and the stratum pool is responding to say it has been accepted. So this is really, really cool because he's using what is a generic version here, 6.7.2 of XMRIG. There's been no tweaks, no nothing. All of the magic and secret source has gone into the Digibyte implementation, which is super, super awesome. It means that the barrier to entry for other people looking to get on board and start mining Digibyte, if you've previously been mining Monero, is nothing whatsoever. You've already got all the software there. It allows people to jump on board and give it a try and contribute to the security of Digibyte. So that is super cool as well. Now, uh, I mentioned down here, uh, we've got a question, when will this be available? Hopefully soon. We're looking to do eventually a bit of like a, like a public stress test, if you will, where we wanna get people throwing their hash rate at a pool that is on testnet. Now, obviously this is all gonna be well before it is released and we're still going through a whole bunch of testing and things like that. So it's not about to change overnight or anything. So don't worry about that. But like I mentioned, we are interested in doing a kind of a public uh, stress test on that and that kind of it's probably the best way of wording it yeah and to make sure that what we've got is a rock solid project so again big thank you to Barry for this this is super exciting um, now I don't actually have any screenshots or anything about this either but speaking of both Barry and Matthew uh, you'll know as MC Trivia he's also one of the the guys who's been helping me with the emissions curve and fixing that uh, he originally suggested, I think it was probably around about 12 months ago, that there was the possibility for an autocrypt ASIC. Now, we don't have confirmed proof either way that there is or is not. However, uh, he has been working alongside the team at Blackminer and also Barry as well to look at ways that we can basically confirm and prove that there isn't any kind of an ASIC through a tweak to autocrypt. So this is really quite exciting where there's a bit of discussion going on there. Nothing is set in concrete yet. Now, what would happen is if we did tweak the algorithm ever so slightly, it would basically mean that if there is an ASIC, it would not work and it would cease to function on the autocrypt algorithm. However, if there was not an ASIC and we made these tweaks and changes, then cool, that's not a problem at all for the FPGA miners because that's the whole idea of an FPGA is that you can reprogram it and adjust the algorithm as you need. Uh, most FPGAs will swap back and forth between a bunch of different algorithms, uh, similar to how a graphics card would. So tweaking it and adjusting autocrypt in such a way that would cripple any ASICs, if they do exist, would give us a confirmed living level playing field. So I think that's quite cool. Um, we're going to find out more about that soon. Still in talks with them and other people in the community to both gauge sentiment, find out more about it, what our options are, all that kind of juicy goodness. So anyway, if you haven't yet, go give Barry a follow. 
give Yoshi a follow, and I'll include a link down below to Matthew as well, MC Trivia. Uh, give him a follow as well. That's going to be all from me for today. If you do have any questions, hit me up in the comment section below. You can reach me on Twitter. I'm at DGB underscore chilling. I'll talk to you in the next video. I might see you tomorrow. Cheers.